All right, y'all, it's 2025 and there is a brand new way to learn how to beat match. Today, I'm gonna be jumping into a video where we're gonna be using Serato stems to really isolate the beat, remove all of the distraction and really learn how to beat match very quickly. If you just break down the word beat match, it's two different words, right? It's beat match. You're taking two different beats. You're taking this beat and this beat and matching them up together so that they synchronize and move through the timeline in the most generic way of explaining this. But honestly, when I teach a lot of my students how to beat match, I'm always talking about using Lego. Like I use music as pieces of lego and when you literally take them the right way legos only go in kind of one way and as long as you jive them up you line them up and click them together you're gonna have an absolutely perfect mix every time when i learned how to meet beat match myself I learned literally just using mathematics. Back in the day, we didn't have Serato. We didn't have any of these visual keys. Now it's so much, so much easier for anyone to learn how to beat match. So if you guys are struggling, shoot me a DM, drop a comment, or just like and subscribe because I got fire content for you guys all of the time. Let's jump right into it. I'm gonna use Serato DJ Pro, but you can use literally any program that there is this process is the same across all programs, Virtual DJ, DJ Pro, Serato, Record Box. It doesn't matter what kind of software you use. It's the same process. We've been beat matching the same way since the dawn of time. If you think that you're just going to kind of stumble along the way to figure it out or you're going to come up with your, your new way of beat matching that doesn't exist, we're still using the concepts that we use from day one, but instead now we're able to make it easier now because we got stems and we can kind of change the way things happen. So I'm going to explain this a little bit more when we get into the video, but let's jump over there and let's check it out. Okay, so here we are in Serato right now. We got two songs already loaded up. One we got like a country track and the other one we just have an instrumental here. Um, maybe I should use a track just so we can kind of see the issues that people run into. A lot of times when people are having problems beat matching, it's because they're using original tracks that if we look at this song right here, if we use this, this track from the start, we would have an issue because the phrasing on this track does not start the right way. We have an extra bar in here that's just kind of like an intro to the track. If you were trying to beat match these together, even if you got them same, let's sync up the track. So when you're beat matching, you gotta make sure BPM equals BPM. That's the first rule. Um, the second rule is that you want them to drop at the right time in the phrase. If you don't do that, um, your mix can sound a little wonky. It's going to sound off. A lot of people have problems with phrasing, but anytime I teach somebody how to beat match, you got to worry about phrasing later. Like if you're worried about keys and you don't know how to beat match, throw the key out the window. Like that key ain't going to help you right now. And that's kind of the same thing for phrasing. Like it is important, but right from the start, it doesn't really matter. Um, as long as you're kind of understanding the concept that like, the one beat drops on the one. So just to show you guys how it would sound all messed up right here is if I drop these right now at the same time, it, it'll be beat matched, but the phrase is messed up. So it's gonna sound a little wonky. <laughs> So it doesn't sound too bad. Like it doesn't sound terrible. I've heard way worse mixes in my time, but if we actually started here, which is the real downbeat, if we sound, started it right here and dropped the mix, it's gonna sound a lot cleaner. Yeah, all right? So that's just a little introduction on why phrasing matters. For what we're doing right here today, it's not that important. I don't think it's that important anyways. Um, what we're gonna be doing here is moving to the ninth beat because we are using eight bar extended intros. Um, let's just right from the hop. <laughs> Right from the hop, we're just gonna beat match these two tracks together and it does have a vocal in it, but I'm gonna show you after this demonstration, kind of my reasoning why we would just use the drums and isolate the drums out, remove everything else in the track, just so that we can practice our beat matching. So right now we're on our ninth bar 
first beat, dropping it on the downbeat of the second track. So this mix right here should be perfect right out the gate. Let's try it out. So we're mixing like a classic hip hop track right now with a brand new country track. And for some reason it kind of works. Um, why is that? Because one, the keys are pretty well in sync. Like these keys are good. Uh, the BPM is good. The drums are good. The beat is good. The phrase is good. So the mix is going to be good. Just like we don't even need ears. We can analytically look at this song the way I taught you. I told you guys I learned how to DJ with mathematics. We can just analytically look at this mix right here and we're pretty sure that it's going to be good. Um, if you were a remixer, you could just like pull all this stuff out, throw it in a folder, and then within five minutes, you could do like 15 different mixes and figure out which is your favorite mix, like which one sounds the best. Sometimes they're not going to work out like that, but pretty well we got all the facts here saying like this should be a good mix um, but the concept of this video is just really breaking it down to the drums because if you didn't understand all of that analytics you're, you're not going to understand what i'm talking about so what we're going to do here is we're just going to drop this down right to the drums so all we got now is So if you're just at home playing around and you're just trying to like figure out how to beat match because you can't really figure it out, you don't know what's going on, this is the easiest way. Just have a drum beat loop in. And then if you feel like it, just cut this one. When you're ready, bring it back in. If you notice there, because I didn't drop it exactly where it needed to be, I had to nudge it a little bit. So this is gonna help you as well. Like if you don't know how to nudge on your turntable, that's where you like take the outside of the platter and just kind of push it up just so you can kind of like figure, you can, you can line these up exactly how you need. Like right here, we have the the pitch bend as well. If you got like a rev seven, you're gonna have a pitch bend again. If you don't know what the pitch bend is, this is something that's really gonna help you out. And because there's no vocals or anything, already you can see here that like you, now you've already, because you've got the track beat matched, you got the drums lined up. You kinda, you know what's going on here. From there, now you can start playing around with the track. You can start bringing elements back in. You can start like, messing around with it but you have to understand this foundational principle that the beats have to line up like if the beats aren't lined up you got this one here one second ago this was absolutely perfectly beat matched and now it's like sounds like shoes in a dryer why is that or you you just dropped it in the wrong spot kind of You think now like the, the 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 claps are lined up this should be all good right but it's still it's not good because if you look here now your phrase is off you got your, your drums in the wrong position so this is where you're gonna start to really start to understand you get to start to learn like what can you do what can't you do am i breaking some rules here like what is going on why can't I get this working and that's the easiest way if you just want to, are gonna go out there and think that like you're just gonna take two different tr normal tracks two two originals and just like line them up and just I am in the vibes the nice street like the taxi one oh. This already sounds like the worst mix I've ever heard in my life. And this is what a lot of guys start with. They just take two original tracks, drop them, and think that like they're just going to kind of figure it out. And that is the worst way. You're just going to spend hours and hours and hours of time practicing the wrong thing. That like it doesn't even make sense why you're doing that. You're just thinking that like this is where the two songs start. And like most people just kind of drop the two songs and then they mix. 
not realizing that that like all you're doing here is learning the wrong thing. You're practicing the wrong way and this is going to hold you back forever. And you're going to eventually your, your controller is going to be covered in dust. You're going to sell it on Facebook Marketplace and never look back. So if you guys are struggling with your beat matching, uh, you need some one on one assistance. You need a coach to show you what's going wrong in your career. I have taught countless DJs within one single session how to beat match. Don't be another statistic. Don't let your dreams end today. Shoot me a message, drop a comment, like, subscribe. I will see you on the next one. Let's go.